want to live a powerless life life without identity kingdom of darkness does not acknowledge that i have come and i live under the yoke of the devil i don't want to live i don't want to live under the subjugation of the kingdom of darkness i believe in power i'm a creature of power i was forged by power i was created for power i have been given power if it will ever be then it will be by power A time came, the Lord spoke to me, and I heard it clearly. He said, if you want to see me in these days, look for me in the night. I felt that was too harsh, because the kind of job I do, I want to pray all my prayers in the daytime. So that maybe I study in the night, and then I sleep. Then he, but he said, if you want to find me, look for me in the night. I didn't quite like obey that. And it came to pass, I finished preaching a sermon one day and half of my body became paralyzed. Then I now say, where are you? <laughs> he said, but I told you if you want to look for me. <laughs> you see, I didn't need to have that experience. All right? That word was supposed to be established government for me to begin to operate in a certain way. And I will not even know that that arrow was in view. But you see, I became exposed because I disobeyed that instruction. So it took me six months of, of repentance. Six months of repentance. In fact, the doctors, they started, oh my God. The doctors said so much. They said, I said, Jesus. <laughs> it was an affliction to submit to those, uh, those doctors. They said, they tested, tested, and they said, oh, God, something. Then I went, I knew I was being chastised. So I went back to the Lord. I said, okay, all right. Even with this hand, I will, I will come. May you, may you learn when he speaks. Don't learn by experience in the name of Jesus. Amen. That word was supposed to establish government. And I began to heal. When I began to obey with the pain, then I began to heal. It took six months for me to heal. Now, if he says, can we, can we see by 12? <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be there. You don't know what you escape just because you comply. So Adam thought that God was suggesting. He didn't know that God was instructing. And we do not live by God's explanations. We live by his instructions. There are several things that God may say that do not sound cerebral. And you know, you are an engineer. Everything must be structured. You must understand the layout. And God doesn't give you sufficient detail. And because of that, you feel you can actually do without obeying. It means that there is a dimension of the spirit of God you'll never get to know. Because he said we are witnesses of these things. And so also, it's the Holy Ghost whom God has given unto them that obey him. So the first thing we see here is government by the voice of God. The voice of God also revealed the justice system of heaven. The justice system of heaven. That's one of the first revelations that God had to smuggle into Adam's life because he said in the day that you eat of this fruit, according to the position of the justice system of heaven in dying, ye shall surely die. Yeah, that was the position. Just in case you have any intention to rebel, the judgment about that activity has been captured already. And the position of that justice system is that you will taste of something that wasn't intended to be in this civilization. Nothing like death was part of what God created. It was Adam's rebellion that made... Are you with me? So that's why eternal life is superior to death. Because before death came, eternal life was. And that was why it was impossible for Jesus to be kept in the grave forever. It was not possible. It was not possible. Because what you are trying to... Do, are you with me? When Jesus went into the grave, he went eh, into that grave with his faith in his father. And his 
the spirit of God was in his spirit. Are you with me? You can't, you can't keep, you can't keep that arrangement in Hades. No. Satan would have done this kind of scan they used to scan for metals before you bought the plane. He would have done a scan on Jesus <laughs> to know that he was carrying something that is alien to the system that is about to be admitted into. It was impossible for him to have been in that grave because what he was carrying was superior to every principle that was at work in the underworld. So every time he spent there, he spent on our behalf so that we would not have accommodation there. Because it was not for himself. He had done no, no injustice. Hallelujah. And when it was articulated in heaven by the justice system of heaven, that his blood had the value that was equivalent and superior to the iniquity and the sin of humankind, the same spirit he entered into the, the grave with, that same spirit. Now it's time to go. And all the demons from Saudi Arabia, the ones from your village, from Obomosho, they couldn't. <laughs> May the Lord help us. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that was the second thing. The second thing that was revealed by the voice of God was God's justice system. Have you read your Bible? It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's not all. And what? What's the meaning of that? First of all, it means that uh, the kingdom of God, the things that pertain to God's kingdom must be sought out. They are not available at face value. They are not on the surface. Uh, just in case you have come to the understanding of the fact that your purpose is captured in God and you want to know about it, you would begin a seeking adventure. Yes. And when you are seeking, I advise you, the one you are seeking is a king spirit. You can you can bully him with tears and then make him respond. He will respond when he wants to. And that's why there's something called waiting on the Lord. Uh, he, he, mm. <laughs> Waiting on what? But you see, a man of the flesh, a cerebral man feels it's a waste of time for you to invest time waiting. But waiting is an expression of the fact that you understand that you are not in charge here. You are appealing to a king. And then when that king decides, so it is of his own free will, then it's all right. This is how it is. Sometimes you pray and there's no answer. When you now become discouraged, it is in your discouragement you will now show up. So another time you now say, okay, I'll be, I'll be discouraged quick. <laughs> then when you are now discouraged, he will leave you. <laughs> you can't intimidate. There's no formula there. You just wait. You just wait upon the Lord. Now, that's the first aspect. The, the things of the kingdom are hidden. You need to seek them out. But he says we should also seek his righteousness. You know, as you advance in God for every stage, for every anointing, for every uh, strand of mercy that God bequeaths to you in form of ability, in form of possibility, hallelujah, he operates with certain laws. Because the first thing I do when I notice a new dimension of the ray of God's grace is that I go back to God and say, what's this one for? If you don't do that regularly, you will soon think it's happening because you are six foot five. Kabo si me ke ke ke. It's happening because my name is Arome. You will now tie it to you. You will not know that what is making you who you are is a gift that God gave you. And you are serving your generation from the pot of that gift. And God will never give you anything that you don't need him to operate. So there are laws. And you need to be right with the laws. When God was committing the teaching ministry to me, he said, what I've given you, all right, you can't mix it with pride. Oh, my ancestors are kings. We were trained to be Arrogant, that is how you, you can be a prince. Oh, you don't understand me. I pray God will give you insight. Amen. So the first dealing I had with God, it took 12 years 
for me to be emptied of myself. I don't believe that process has ended though. Eh? But I can tell you practical dealings I had from God to kill pride. Now, the law that surrounds that teaching grace will not allow pride. There are many anointings you can carry and be proud and it will not be a problem. Not that one. Now, many people do not seek to find the laws that accompany some... Oh my God. Do you re... <laughs> okay. Isaiah was the one that told the prophetic story huh? of, of Lucifer. Isaiah 14, verse 12 to 14. How are thou fallen? O Lucifer, son of the morning, how are thou cast to the ground? Thou that this what? Weaken the nations. How is it? You, you were an epitome of, of, of beauty and wisdom. How is it that you are on the ground? Because what he carried, the beauty and perfection he carried, he could not, he, the laws would not allow him mix it with ambition. But he, he did not seek diligently to understand that there were laws attached to virtues that he carried. And he violated those laws and his place now was on the ground. It's better for you not to be great than for you to taste of greatness and then be cast down. So as you seek the kingdom, you also seek to be right with what? With the laws. They are laws. I assure you, they are laws. Oh, and that's why when we begin to mature, we find out that we have only one option. And that option is a narrow path. The options are not many. Yeah. If me and my wife quarrel, we know we have to settle. That's the option. <laughs> the options are not many. God will begin to make it more narrow. More narrow because there are laws. There are laws. There are laws. As the same way you seek earnestly to know your purpose, also seek, he's saying, to know the laws and be right, be aligned, be up to date with them. That's how kingdom men operate. Are you with me? Now, so, and that's the reason why the justice system of heaven is revealed so that you can understand uh, what is the position of God's justice system uh, in the light of this matter. The same way you seek for God's will, that's how you seek to know the position. Are you with me? There was something God told me. He said, if you do this, half of your lifespan will be cut off. Not, I will not withdraw the anointing. No. You will still be, do what? But you will, this is the age you will go. They are lost. Don't ever think. The, the physical, the spiritual realm is more advanced than this physical realm. Are you with me? Aha. Uh -huh. You see, Cain was not adequately um, educated. He was not adequately educated. His ignorance did not spare him from the sledgehammer of uh, the perspective of uh, the justice system of heaven. He didn't, he didn't spare him. Okay. I don't want to go into that. I don't want to dab double into that. I don't want to double into that. Are you with me? I don't want to double into You remember what happened when he killed his brother? Killed his brother. And then God now said, ah, where is Abel, your brother? Hmm. He now said, well, I don't know when you gave me the assignment of keeping my brother. He's an adult. He's of age. What are we talking about? So Cain responded as though it was a mortal that addressed him. He did not understand that it was a perspective of the justice system of heaven. And then just to clear his doubt, what God told him was that the, the blood of thy brother, it, it ascended into our realm. And it came with a cry. That cry. Whoa. So the guy was not told that in, you know, if you are caught in the Nigerian bar, what you need is a witness, either an expert witness or an eyewitness. But in this bar, this court, there's another bar here. In this court, they take witness from blood too. So Cain was not educated as to those matters, but yet he was not exonerated from the effect of his, his, his transgression. 
just because he was ignorant. And so as you seek to know the will of God, know the purpose of God, it's also in necessary for you to seek to know the laws that govern the realm. Hallelujah. It was not God's ordination for Cain to have ended the way he ended. But you see, the laws in God's realm are uncompromisable. So he said, we need to seek also. So Adam was given an idea of the, justice, the position of the justice system of heaven about any form of trespass because he had been duly warned. As the second, the third thing that the, the voice of God does, it reveals the position of what? Of the justice system of heaven. Finally. Are you with me? Finally, 18, now... God now made arrangement for helper. You, you know that one, so I will not go there. He looked at him and said, there was no help meet found for him. So you know that aspect. Let's not. <laughs> so God provided help meet. That help meet was a result of a decree. God had to decree it. He spoke it. It's not, it's not that God just observed and went to bring help, help me. He spoke. So if you are accurate, you should hear before you end up with help me. Because God normally speaks when he notices that there's a challenge in that area. It's not human intelligence what's going on, but you need to. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is the first aspect. This is God trying to colonize and the key to the earth realm, to governance of the earth realm, happens to be man. And God will have to come and present a proposal to him. And the devil will have to come and present a proposal to him. I would like us, maybe when we come for the service tomorrow, to see the devil's proposal. Then you will know that the devil lives in your house. And he speaks into your head many more times than you, than you think. And any time you begin to hear these voices, it is because colonial masters are seeking for control. Now, the point is, who will you allow to rule in your space? So, that's why man was created to serve. He will serve something. He must serve something. There's no way you can escape it. The devil is already interested. God is already interested. You will serve something at the end of the day. Because the colonial masters will not leave any stone unturned. It's either you are sold out to God, or you will still be like Peter that the devil can speak through and Jesus will be able to identify that that transmission is from Satan. I don't want to be that vessel. I want to be a spring that brings only sweet waters. Hallelujah. Can we shift to the book of Psalms 82? Let me show you a few things from the background and then we're going to pray together. There's a lot of responsibility upon us and God will have us understand the scope of, of responsibility that he is bequitting to us in the name of Jesus. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth amongst the gods. Are you here? Can you go back to verse 1? Because I would like us to see these things properly. Big G huh? is what? Is standing in the congregation of the mighty. I have read my Bible for many years. And I know that the God of the Bible doesn't need to stand. He rules by decrees. So he doesn't need to stand to rule. Now, so the question is, meanwhile, in my own study of the Bible, God stood twice. And this is one of them. Alright? And it's the same reason in this scripture that is the same reason in the other scripture for God to stand. The reason why he was standing was because of the congregation that gathered before him. He called that congregation the congregation of the mighty. It's the same congregation of the mighty that he stood before. He called them the gods. Small g. And the reason why he had to stand was because it was time for him to judge powerful entities. And in this presentation, in order for him to be just in his judgment, 
one of the things he had to do was to tell them why he was judging them and so the next verse now gives us an insight into um, God's explanation he said how long will he judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked next verse defend the poor and the fatherless do justice to the afflicted and needy if God finds a man among us and he decides to bequeath and to bestow his anointing the reason is because he raises a judge among us someone that will defend the plight of the poor one the fatherless one the one that has no covering the one that has no protection that grace is supposed to become something that makes you fight for a generation fight for a people so that the hand of darkness can be stayed that's what the anointing does but unfortunately these anointed ones these people that received grace to be participants in some of the administrations of God now began to pervert judgment the thing for which God gave them grace to do they joined with the enemies to plunder the people that had no covering and God said all right it's time to judge this was why he stood in the congregation of the mighty so that first verse God standard in the congregation of the mighty he was not referring to Amadioha or to Shongo or to a deity he was referring to men men that he had given grace to take care of some of his business you know why I brought this scripture into my teaching is because uh, after telling them what they would have done with the empowerment he gave them he now gave them an example like a tutorial to explain to them that this error did not start today this error started with Adam verse 4 what verse are we on okay uh -huh. go again this is Adam this is a tutorial they know not neither will they understand it means that there were several, several things that Adam and Eve did not know and because they did not have that knowledge the gates of understanding was shut to them it was your teaching that highlighted the scripture yesterday they know not Adam did not understand that he was a, the key to operate creation and when he rebelled against God creation rebelled against him everything went haywire because he was supposed to be the one to give direction he was supposed to be the authority of the seen realm and then submitting to the ultimate authority of the universe so that God will rule through him we cannot consider this creature called man outside of the kingdom he is supposed to be an extension of the rule of God an extension of the dominion of God and just in case just in case darkness still locks around in your corridor in your family then then you have not yet understood what God has called you to do we might need to look for another because you may not be the one that is yet to come a, a, a man is supposed to be a kingdom agent extending the authority of God a conduit through which God can come into the your space and come into your world and bring bring his systems bring his principle manifest his glory you are that being and by the time we leave this place at the end of the conference you'll be empowered empowered to rule in your space in the name of Jesus he said they know not neither will they understand then they walk on perpetually in darkness their lack of knowledge uh, 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 sentenced them to a journey in darkness that's the fall if that was all it would have been good enough but the foundations of the earth went out of course because of their error the foundations were distorted because of the error of Adam and Eve and for instance on what we mean by the foundation the principle by which that creation was supposed to operate with it was withdrawn mosquito that was meant to be sucking juice from flowers when his manwa was withdrawn now it takes blood the foundation it takes blood now because the foundation are out of course now before God judged 
Next verse, before he judged, he told them what he created them to be. I have said, ye are gods. He said, I have said, ye are gods. And all of you, you are children of the Most High God. The extent to which you can manifest that authority is the degree to which you are submitted to the ultimate authority because you are a conduit. You are a passageway. You are a window. You are a projection of the ultimate king. The one that has true authority is domiciled in the heavens. It's his authority that is delegated on your life. That is the reason why you prophesy. It's the reason why when you lay your hands upon the sick, they recover. I have said ye are gods. And all of you are children of the most high God. This is the sentence now. He said, but ye shall die like men. So God never intended that we will just be mortals. Second sentence. Ye shall fall like one of the princes. That means originally you are a prince of rank. An entity of rank. When God says, um, Adam, where are you? It was his throne in the spirit that became vacant. Because he was already a ranking creature. In the spirit realm. He never knew. These were the things that Adam did not know for which he chose the argument that Satan brought. And Satan made him walk in darkness. And the entire foundation of this world went out of course. The story doesn't end there. The apostles of old, they said, the earnest expectation of the creation, this, this quagmire will be corrected by a new set of people that will not lose where the ancestors lost. A new breed without greed. A radical opposition against unrighteousness. Men that fear God. Men that hate, hate sin. Men that know the voice of the Spirit. For some others, God will put the burden of some nations. Malawi, Rwanda, Uganda. But there is an assignment for everyone. It doesn't matter where you walk, that's your walk, that's your job. But your calling is your walk.